Hello, Lauren here with Lauren Elizabeth Animal Art, and I help beginner through professional level artists reduce stress while mastering animal art. I'm going to pick up where we left off last week talking about the pet portrait commission process. And in today's video, as I paint this Halloween Basset Hound puppy, I'm going to be talking to you about what I mean by the test run before a commission. All right, guys, let's get started. So if you'd like to paint this Halloween Basset Hound puppy on either paper or canvas, I have the full real-time tutorial with a traceable, a list of materials, and the reference photo in my online animal art masterclass. Now I've been asked by Arteza to do a product review. Many of you know that I've been using this brand for many years in both my YouTube and masterclass tutorials. So as I explain what I really mean by the test run before a commission, and why it's so important, I'll also be covering how I use Arteza art supplies to add both personality and color to my pet portraits. Last week was the first of this pet portrait commission process series where I talked about defining your pet portrait specialty, your artist style, your price, your customizable and fixed elements, just to name a few, well, all these things can be really difficult, if not kind of impossible, if you've never tracked your painting time or paid any attention to your material costs or creating a good quality pet portrait. It can be really hard to know what customizable elements you're gonna offer customers, such as having a multicolor background or a plain color background or painting on paper or canvas or even your turnover rate so you know how many paintings to accept in a single month or multiple months. Doing a test run, as long as you take notes and track these variables, will set you up for total success. Plus, and this is a huge plus, you won't feel so stressed. That's honestly what inspired this series that I'm doing, as well as my commission course coming out in December. I see so many creatives that are held back by fear, but they have so much talent and so much potential. So for you to learn and get the very most out of this test run, here's how I recommend you operate it. First, find a friend or a family member that you can create a pet portrait for that you trust and for free while tracking the following things. Okay, I know I said free, but this is only one time, not multiple times, especially if you're trying to run a business here. First, you wanna track your timing. So that means from the moment you start collecting reference photos from your friend or family member, let's call this person Missy in this example, to the moment you hand Missy or ship off her painting. You also wanna time yourself drawing and painting this pet portrait. Maybe you'll paint this in one sitting, but very likely it'll be broken up into several days. So I recommend turning on the stopwatch on your phone and write down for each sitting how long it took you to draw and or paint. Now I also recommend you track how easy or how difficult it was for you to go back and sit down to paint. Maybe you thought you could continue painting the following day but you came to realize that after work, you just don't have the energy or the creativity to do that. So then you have to take note and get up a little earlier to paint, or maybe you found it worked out just fine to paint after work. These are things to take note of. Track how you feel and make adjustments so that you can aim to create when you feel the most alert and the most creative. If you're currently trying to start or grow your animal art business, and you only have 20 minutes before or after work, take it, do what you can with the time that you are given. That's all you have to work with, so make the best of it. Sometimes 20 minutes is actually more productive than an entire hour. Now, if you're using acrylic paint as your medium and you have these long, big gaps between sitting down to paint, take note of that so that you're not wasting so much paint on your paint palette and start thinking about some solutions to help you save on paint which is gonna save on money. And not to mention, you want to think about how to arrange your paint studio or your space to make it super convenient and very inviting for you to easily complete these commissions. Something very small that has a huge impact on how consistent I am with painting 
is that once I'm done painting, I clean up thoroughly. I leave it better than I came in. And that is so inviting and it really encourages me to go back to my art studio. And that leads me to materials and the cost of materials for that one portrait. List the brand names, list the brushes you used, list the paint, even the canvas or paper, write them down and all this should go in a notebook or say a sketchbook, just anywhere convenient that you can go back to and go over later. Now I highly recommend creating a portrait for someone not locally, but for a friend or family member that you can ship this painting to so you start familiarizing yourself with packaging and shipping costs and the materials that you want to use. Putting a little bit of money and time and effort into the packaging really goes a long way. Now it doesn't have to be super fancy or expensive, but it certainly adds value to your service. So I highly recommend you write down the wrapping paper you used, maybe the box, how much that cost, any marketing materials that you added in like a business card, take a picture of how it looked at the end, and the final cost of shipping. Now remember, this is a test run. So if you've never done anything like this before, it'll likely be slower than maybe when you're 10 or 20 commissions in and you've had a lot more experience. Plus in another video in this series, I'll give you tips on how I recommend you running your pet portrait commission process so it's efficient, so it's fun, low stress, and you have happy customers. But what this test run is so helpful for is helping you to see how fast or slow you work to set goals for getting a little quicker or maybe slowing down. Let's say you chose to work on an 8x10 canvas for this test run. You can now tell customers in the future that it took you maybe six to eight hours to complete one pet on an 8x10. Maybe that's not even a size you want to offer because maybe it's too small for you or you want to go much larger. Now you can more easily price your pet portraits because you have some idea of the cost of materials and shipping and painting and drawing, not to mention your labor hours. You're also probably one step closer to figuring out how you want to paint your backgrounds or your artist style or general terms like we talked about in last week's video. With this test run, you're probably more conscious about how you want to paint dogs or if you even want to paint dogs. Maybe you decide after this test run, you just want to specialize in cat portraits. Now, another thing you want to keep in mind is that every painting will have new problems to solve. There'll be new things that you'll be attempting, new challenges. Sometimes paintings that are really complex take you so much less time than a simple small painting that ends up taking you a lot longer. Sometimes things just don't click. Sometimes things are actually more complex or more simple than we expect. And so this can change your timing but you really want to make things as streamlined as possible without sacrificing the quality and your art. All right, so now we're gonna switch gears and talk about how I add personality and lots of color to my pet portraits. And I've been doing this for years using the Arteza metallic paint. I love making my portraits really eye-catching with color and the Arteza gold and the pearl white, the silver, and the copper metallics really adds this extra vibrant shine and a slight sparkle to my pet portraits. Now it's not a paint you add as a base or your primary color, it's the top layer that you embellish. So like I did with this puppy's hat, it draws attention to that blue. I use the Arteza Pearl Arctic Blue and it really makes those yellow polka dots pop and lets the viewer know right away that that light source is coming from the left. I love the consistency of Arteza's paint as well because it's thick and creamy and yet I can still create transparent washes over my layers to create things like insect wings or sunglasses and later in this tutorial you'll see I use it to create the glow around the moon. I also use this exact same technique with the pearl white to create that glow in the bumblebee tutorial that I just made in the master class that I previewed at the beginning of this video. Now this was, however, my first time using the Arteza detail brushes. As a pet portrait artist, I'm really particular about this just because you really need good detail brushes to do things like eye highlights and whiskers and fur strands and so, but I was very impressed. Even though these bristles were really short and tiny, they were strong and very durable. They held the paint well, 
They also didn't hold a lot of water so that I would drip tons of water where I was going to do those tiny details. And I could very easily wash off the paint. So the bristles were actually kind of slippery so that it helped me wash off all the acrylic paint so it doesn't dry to the bristles and create this thick clumpy brush and which makes it even harder to do detail work. I was honestly so impressed by the turnout of this painting and the ease of these brushes and how fun it was to paint this that I decided to almost exclusively use Arteza brushes to teach my masterclass tutorials. Now the last product that I love to use by Arteza to help me sign my work very easily are the Arteza acrylic paint markers. Once your painting is dry, it makes it really easy for you to create this nice clean signature. And also, here's a really cool tip. If you're kind of intimidated about painting whiskers, you can go in with an acrylic white paint marker and just create those whiskers very easily. Also glasses, when you wanna make sure you get that nice edge around the glass. And something I've done recently that's really fun, On I do these ornaments on the logwood slices. I'll, with a pencil, draw in text on these little ornaments that I create with these little animals. And then I'll go in and fill them in with my paint markers because we all know it can be really challenging to paint in letters. So again, this can really help you do text and pretty fonts. Now, if you'd like to try any of these products in your own animal portraits, I have a 10% off coupon code, as well as their links down in the description box. And you'll also find some really good inspiration on Arteza's YouTube channel, which again is linked down below. And lastly, for those of you that don't know, I am releasing my Pet Portrait Commission course on December 15th, coming very soon. In this course, I literally give students a template of the exact same Pet Portrait Commission contract that I fine-tuned and perfected over the last five years that I allow students to copy word for word, aside from the business information, of course. I cover the exact pricing formula I use to price my custom pet portraits, and I go over the entire process from start to finish, from the inquiry to the follow-up at the end. That course will be ready at 10 a.m. on December 15th, available to the Maine Coon and Stallion tier students of my online Animal Art Masterclass. All right, creatives, have a blessed day. I'll see you next week. Bye.